What's up? Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. It's your boy Kenny C here. August 4th, 2011. We're getting ready. Okay, we're getting ready to get the show up and running. So stick around and enjoy my voice if you want. Don't enjoy too much. <laughs> uh, Triple Threat Wrestling Radio should be a good one hour show in store for you all this evening. Uh, we're going to look back in the past week. Couple of matches announced for SummerSlam. Uh, what else? We gonna look back into Impact previewing tonight's episode, I should say. Interview with indie pro star Chrissy Johnson, and we got this day in wrestling history, and we'll make our picks for the Hardcore Justice pay per view. All that and more for the next sixty minutes. So, uh, stick around for that. And now I'm waiting for Jeff here to get his Skype up so I can add him to the call. Alright, Jeff is up. Let me add him to the call pronto. Gonna go ahead and add him on here right now. Uh, thank you everybody for listening. If you're listening to this on the Ustream side, trying to get Jeff up in here. See if he'll pick it up, pick up the phone. He just finished his show moments ago. Uh, he just finished his show moments ago. Oh boy. I call him, he doesn't pick up. Uh, so I'm gonna just wait till the song ends and then I'm gonna get him on the call here. He's still in the chat room. So I'll get him on here once we uh, get ready to start the show here. I notice I've yet to get the intro for the show from Sky High, but he's been busy so. I may have to work on the intro on my own, I guess. So, uh, here we go. We're getting ready to start. We're getting ready to go live, and here we go. And um, here we are. Hey, everybody. Hey, wrestling fans. Welcome to another edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. You're listening to us on itmiradio.com. Let me try calling Jeff again. I tried to call him once. The voice machine popped up. So let's try getting Jeff back in here. Uh, we got uh, the graveyard. We got Brownie Master, my friend Andrew. And we have a schnookum dip. Hello, everybody that's just in the chat room. Hey, this is Jeff. I'm sorry I wasn't here to take your call. But I okay. <laughs> so much for that Jeff apparently appears to be away from his computer but we'll get Jeff in here up in, uh, momentarily um, so let's not waste any more time let's get to our, our show already uh, let's start off with the WWE portion of the show and before I get to that shout out to Andrew Andrew who's under the username Brownie Master he went to the SmackDown taping in Lexington this past Tuesday night. He was there. Uh, so I hope you had a great time, Andrew. And now I get a Skype message from Jeff saying he's ready. And there he I'm is. Here. Hey. What's up, brother? Good. Doing real good. Uh, good. All right. <clears throat> so as I was saying, Andrew... Under the username Brownie Master, he was at the SmackDown taping this past Tuesday night at uh, Lexington. And I said last week I wasn't sure if they was going to be back at um, Augusta. When I just looked at the calendar the other day, and they will be in Augusta. They're going to be there on Saturday, December the 3rd. And it will be a non-televised show, of course. And not only that, it will be um, SmackDown. 
the SmackDown crew are going to be there. You going? I I hope so. They haven't just uh, they haven't announced when the tickets are going to go on sale. It probably won't. Be, it probably won't go on sale until September or October. Uh, that's all I know at this particular time. So uh, let's go ahead and um, take a look back at what happened. Of course, uh, this past Monday night, Triple H had a decision to make involving the WWE title situation, saying that Cena was not going to be stripped of his belt. CM Punk wasn't going to be stripped of his belt neither. So instead, Triple H had decided to get these two to face off one-on-one at SummerSlam when the winner will be the undisputed WWE Champion. So uh, those guys can enjoy being co-champions for one more week. Because after SummerSlam, there will be only one WWE Champion. It's a good move, man. Smart move. Yeah, obviously he wasn't going to strip from Punk. He wasn't going to strip from Cena. I say, why not? They had a great match at Money in the Bank. Let these two face it. Let these two face it out in the ring, and uh, see how it goes. And I kind of like the confrontation between Punk and Triple H this past Monday night. Obviously, the first time they met face to face since Triple H became in charge, and since CM Punk came back, it's quite tension between employer and employee. Uh, yeah, what's the deal with uh, that dude coming out? The other guy that came out. Um, oh, you talking about um, at the end of the uh, show? Uh, his name is uh, John Laurinaitis. If you recall, that's the same guy who John Cena punched in the face right. at Money in the Bank before he lost. Right. And he's been, according to CM Punk and John Cena's, he's been Vince McMahon's yes man, and. Obviously, he came in and told Triple H that Cena should should be fired. Because remember, at Money in the Bank, if Cena lose, which he did, he would have been fired. And before McMahon can make that official, Triple H comes in, tells him, you're being relieved of your duties. Right. And Triple H made it clear he's not going to fire Cena. And like Triple H said to kick off the show... For the decisions he has made, is due to business. CM Punk coming back, business. Morrison back, business. JR back, business. You know, that's the key word he's been saying, you know, throughout Monday night. So, nobody's losing their job. Nobody's going anywhere. Regardless of what John Laronitis or anyone thinks, Cena's not going anywhere. Get used to it. The and only one that's going to lose his job is going to be John Laurinaitis. Yeah, because Triple H is in charge now, and he has the power to fire Laurinaitis. Now, Jim Ross used to be the position that uh, he used to be the position that Laurinaitis is in right now, but obviously, due to health problems, Jr. stepped down for that position, but he's back only as. Uh, announcer, he's not back at that job position. That's there goes to Laronitis. So Jr. is just doing Monday Night Raw again. That's it. Yeah, he's just gonna do Monday Night Raw and Michael Cole. He's gonna just still do both Raw and SmackDown. If I was the COO, I'll just let Cole stick to SmackDown. Right. He just and let Jr. and the King do what they always done all for many years, and that's do the commentary on Raw. That's, right. that's the A show. That's the number one show. It should have number one talent. And Michael Cole, he's done. He's not number one talent. He's not number one talent. No. He he does pretty well on SmackDown. I mean, as being the second guy, he just ain't number one. So, it is what it is. Uh, Let's see. Other matches from this past Monday night. How about what happened with the Divas Battle Royal? Beth Phoenix, by herself, eliminated the Bella Twins. Goes on. That was pretty good. I mean, that she's done stuff like this before. You know, she never ceased to amaze me. 
You know, she, she, she just that powerful. Don't let her skinny arms fool you. That woman can lift two, three people at once. As she... And then she took freaking Kelly Kelly out. Yeah, she took her out as well. Um, just letting her know her days as champions numbered and that she's gunning for that championship. Uh, so Kelly Kelly finally is going to have her toughest task since winning the title. Uh, this ain't the Bella Twins you're facing. You are going up against... A three-time woman's champion. And that's on pay-per-view, right? Yeah, that will be at the SummerSlam pay-per-view. Uh, if Beth Phoenix wins, she will become the fourth female to win the Women's and Divas Championship. The other three females, Michelle McCool, who's retired, Mickey James, who's in Impact, and Melina, who's still in the WWE roster. So, Beth Phoenix not just looking to get on top of the Divas division, but to make history at SummerSlam. Uh, she's obviously has the advantage, and she has never lost at SummerSlam. This will be Kelly Kelly's first SummerSlam wrestling, not just being there to look cute. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I do got some other stories to share. And last week, we talked a little bit about Maurice and her stalker situation. Well, I got the story here. And that her stalker situation has been resolved. She just filed a uh, for a permanent restraining order against the stalker. And this story is courtesy of TMZ.com. Uh, and this happened before... The Monday night show and she was originally scheduled to be in that divas battle royal but she wasn't there because she's obviously recovering from an injury so you can now add Maurice to the injury report with Big Show and Kane uh, no word on how long she's gonna be out of action I don't like her anyway you don't like Maurice no I don't like her the <laughs> Wow. She's got a crappy attitude, and I like to smack the shit out of her. <laughs> I just don't like it because she tried to speak too much French or whatever. Uh, but she's a former two-time Divas champion. Big deal. Yeah, she, she can fight. She just talks too much Spanish or whatever. I don't Who's know. she banging over there? Who? Who's she banging over there? I'm asking you. Maurice? Yeah. She ain't banging anybody. But Come on, she's having sex with somebody over there. <laughs> well, anyway, here's an update on her stalker. The man who is accused of stalking WWE star Maurice Oyelet has been legally banned for going anywhere near the beauty for the next three years. A L.A. County Superior Court judge granted Maurice request for a restraining order against 61-year-old Lee Siebler. Uh, requ requiring the guy to stay at least 300 yards, 300 feet, excuse me, away from her for the next three years. As previously reported, Owlet claims that Sibler has been harassing her constantly, leaving more than 50 delusional voicemails on her cell phone and sending her increasingly scary letters. letters Promising to track her down L.A. and take me to heaven with him. Several attempts to reach Sibler was unsuccessful. So, uh, there you go. Maurice can put this behind her, recover from injury, and get back in the, uh, get back. She's afraid of a 61-year-old man? That's what it seems like. Oh, my God. You know, she... People would say, well, he's a 61-year-old man. She's a professional wrestler. She could whoop. She can whoop his ass. Exactly. If she wanted to. But obviously, that's for being in the wing. You know, not outside the wing. Well, shit, you can still drop kick the motherfucker. Then the dude will, have, will end up charging her. You know... 
it, it, it's shit happens, I guess, you know. Uh, speaking of CM Punk, let's just say that Chris Jericho, not too happy of CM Punk. As you recall, when CM Punk was talking, mm -hmm. he was talking about superstars that he feels WWE left left out, you know, left, you know, let, let slip go. away, let go, I should say, yeah. He mentioned Mick Foley, mentioned Batista, he mentioned, uh, who else he mentioned? He mentioned Jericho, he mentioned Brock Lesnar. Uh, well, let's just say Chris Jericho sounds off on CM Punk. So, here is the tweet from Chris Jericho. This was from Tuesday. This past Tuesday on Chris Jericho's Twitter account, which is I am Jericho. This is his tweet. Everyone is so excited that CM Punk mentioned me on wall. News flash, I don't give a shit. Mind your own business and stop ripping me off punk. That is the tweet from Chris Jericho. <laughs> I guess seeing Punk can rub people the wrong way, even if though Punk was saying nice things about Jericho. He was giving you props. No need to no need to react that way, Christopher. I mean come on. And I guess the saying that that Punk is whipping you off because he's now going by the best in the world and that Punk has a T shirt and the back of the T shirt that reads best in the world. News flash to Jericho and Punk. Wrestlers has been saying they're the best in the world before both of you were born. You're not the first and y'all won't be the last. So unless one of you two got best in the world, copyrighted or trademark, I suggest you both shut up about being best in the world and catchphrases and such. And besides, Jericho's not even with WWE anymore. He's too busy trying to pursue other things. What is he doing? He just, he's on tour with his rock band Fozzy last time I heard. Thank oh, God. Yeah, he's, he's been keeping himself busy since um, parting ways with the WWE last year. Or was it the year before that? I'm not sure. But he's been keeping himself busy with Dancing with the Stars, with Fozzy. You know, he may do some movies here and there. Who knows what Jericho is doing these days, but uh, don't expect him to come back anytime soon. He's probably going to go to the old guys for him, wrestling. Um, he had opportunities, but chose not to. He will, at eventually. Least, at least not right now. He's just focusing on his other stuff. He will, because he won't be able to make movies, because all he's good at is wrestling, and that's it. Oh, Snookum Dip, who's in the chat room, saying that Maurice is dating the Miz. So that's who the Maurice. That's who Maurice is banging, Miz, huh? Yeah, the Miz. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, teamed up with R Truth uh, this past Monday night. Uh, I find it very interesting to see those two team up. Me too. He, you got Miz, who's glitz and glamour. Our truth is ghetto and talking about little jimmies and conspiracies and such. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Our truth had a shot at the WWE title, and now he's just back to square one, pretty much. You got to yep. wonder if, if you could see Truth and Miz as a tag team. I mean, the Miz is no stranger to tag teams. Uh, he teamed up with the Big Show. They won the tag team titles. Uh, but I don't see... Maybe I don't see that happening anytime soon. Considering I think Miz still wants to be in the hunt for the WWE title after SummerSlam. But then you got a brother with their wheel. He has the Money in the Bank briefcase. Just waiting for that opportunity. I hate that son of a bitch. I know you keep saying that every week. <laughs> you obviously don't like their wheel. Every time you bring up his name, I say it. <laughs> well, Darrio, I believe, defeated Evan Bourne. He's on a, he's on a winning streak since uh, winning that Money in the Bank briefcase. 
So he's gaining momentum for that opportunity of cashing it in. Uh, so we'll see what happens with their wheel. He may cash it in at SummerSlam. I mean, who's he wrestling at SummerSlam? Nobody yet. He's he's he may I think he may end up going up against Kofi. Just a maybe. Not actually sure if that would happen or not. And speaking of our truth, according to reports, he may end up facing John Morrison at SummerSlam. Which will be in uh, Morrison's hometown and up there in LA. LA, right. So, um, and Morrison been wanting to get his revenge on Truth, causing him not one, but two neck injuries. So, he's back. He wants revenge on Truth. You might as well just add that to the uh, SummerSlam pay per view. Uh, Does he get his revenge? I say he will. That. They, I, I guess they'll make the match official next Monday night, considering SummerSlam is just ten days away. So uh, yeah, he'll get his he'll get his opportunity at the revenge at least. Um, <clears throat> obviously, there's not a whole lot of storylines if you think about uh. it. There's not a whole lot of storylines for people can say. Well, who's going to face who? You got Cena versus Punk. You got Orton versus Christian, which kind of leads to the next thing. Orton and Christian, Triple H made the match official. Christian is not going to be happy about this because this match will be a no disqualification match. Uh, which means Christian's attorneys can't get involved this time. And Orton can't be DQ'd this time. Uh, this will be a no holes barred match between Orton and Christian. So, uh, you know, those two facing each other many times. Let's see if Christian can actually beat Randy Orton. And what I mean is, let's see if he can actually beat him by pinfall or submission. He got off easy at Money in the Bank. And he's lucky he's still standing considering he got RKO through the announcer table twice. So uh, he's lucky he's still standing. Have you noticed Orton's been RKO people through the announcer table and the table doesn't break? Yeah, what's up with that? They must be building, they must be doing something to those announcer tables to make it look hard and, and no matter what move you put on them, the tables ain't gonna fall down. Um, let's see. Oh, and almost forgot one thing. Almost forgot one thing. Not sure if you heard, but WWE will give you the network television premiere of WrestleMania 27 on August the 13th, which is the night before SummerSlam. Wow. So, but don't expect NBC to show you all four hours. Instead, you'll get two hours. Who Schnookum do, Dip? I have no idea who Schnookum Dip is, but apparently it's a first time listener. And we got an interview coming up in about six minutes. And wait a minute, someone's calling. This is probably Z. Yeah, it is Z. Let me go ahead and ask Z on here before we get our interview up and running. What's going on, Z? What up, boys and girls? Whoa. Is that hey, me? fix your shit. Do I have an echo, really? Yeah, no, you... Yeah, well, it's not the echo. It's not your fault. It's just the way we're doing the shows lately. Ever since Microsoft bought freaking Skype, every time we run the shows with our mixers now, we get the fucking echo. And only me and you can hear it. Kenny can't hear it. Really? Yeah. I can barely uh, I can barely hear what Z is actually saying. I, well he's got that retard voice on. I do not <laughs> oh yes I do. Don't tell me you don't. I'm the I one who's fucking that. hearing it. You rat bastard. Happy God. Yes, thank you very much. Now I can understand what you're saying. Oh you know what? You can understand me in my show, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> Doing your show tonight, pal? Yeah. In about right. two hours. So, uh, oh. Kenny, 
Yeah. Who are you about to interview, my friend? Um, tonight we're gonna have an indie pro wrestler by the name of Chrissy Johnson. She is from Pennsylvania. She's uh she was interviewed on Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C back in November of last year. So uh she will be here on this show in about five minutes. All right, I'll get off here seeing man have your interview. Uh, but before you do, man, um what do you think about what's been going on with with CM Punk and and now that he's back and and he and Cena are gonna face off at SummerSlam. What's your take on it? Honestly, I love it. And the reason why I say I love it is because uh you know they're producing all that controversy and shit. And um, you know. I'm waiting to see that match again. And, and yeah, they had a classic match at Money in the Bank, and whether people like it or not, as Punk said on Monday, he's a commodity. Uh, and because of him, WWE has gotten a lot buzzed that they've had in quite some time. You know what's awesome is um, the song that CM Punk comes out to now. <laughs> yeah, he changed his theme song there. Uh, Cult of Personality is the name of the song. Yep. And the only reason I recognize that song because when Stone Cold Steve Austin got inducted to the Hall of Fame, that was the song they played take a look back at his highlights and stuff. <clears throat> you want to know something funny how I remember that song? What? Playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Ah, <laughs> uh, you've been playing them Grand Theft Auto games, huh? Dude, I like to play that shit, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, his... So Punk, not only that, but the, ever since Triple H has been in charge, another wrestler has been keeping himself busy. Uh, Mr. Woo 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 himself, Zack Ryder. Uh, not only he's doing his own YouTube show, but he's actually on television now. <laughs> Remember, CM Punk asked Triple H the question when they were at San Diego a few weeks ago. He asked, when is uh, Zack Ryder going to be on television? Well, you got your answer. Not only he's on Raw as wrestler, but he's on SmackDown as an assistant for Teddy Long. How did that fucking son of a bitch get so lucky? Well, he, like CM Punk, is a commodity as well. Oh, he's not. He's just, he just doesn't have the accomplishments that CM Punk has. But he has gained a lot of popularity, especially because of his YouTube show. He needs to improve his wrestling, though, because it kind of sucks at that. That's for sure. Well, you know, they just, you know, you got to give the people what they want, and fans have been begging. <laughs> it was funny he beat Michael Cole. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. And that he, had, feel... he had to wear Triple H's attire. He had to wear that boot, the boots that he was wearing. Cole said that was four times twice his feet. So Triple H must have some big-ass feet if Michael Cole had to fit into those boots. But, Dude, why do you think Stephanie McMahon is married, married to him? Shit. <laughs> For the big feet? Okay, what is big feet equal to most of the time? Oh. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> big feet, you continue, you continue the rest. Yeah, I get it. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny how CM Punk was talking about Triple H and his wife. And I'm sure Triple H has heard it all throughout his career about he and his wife. And, you know, he's just saying, he's just saying to Punk, get some original material. But it was kind of funny how he was poking at, at Stephanie a little bit. He said, you know, if I wasn't in charge right now, I'm going to whoop your ass. It's funny, he said his skinny, fat ass. Now, yep. Now... Punk is skinny, but I don't get the fat part. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty funny when he said, you're skinny, fat ass. And then, Like, huh? Punk How the hell does that work? Well, Punk is skinny. I just don't get the fat part. Maybe the ass part is fat. Hell, who knows? <laughs> and then and then Punk will spawn it, oh, what? You're going to beat me up? Or you, gonna, or you need your p permission from your wife to do that? 
And it's funny. I thought he was going to deck him right there. No shit. <laughs> I just, it just would have been nice for Triple H to step out of that COO for a minute and just really fight him. I you think, know, I realize he's a he's supposed to be a professional and everything, but right. I still say he's come out in his pants and his shirt and everything. But then, well, hey, I'm not a corporate person. I'm a casual person. Oh, he's corporate. He's he's I know. he's suit wearing. I mean, once you walk in the suits, you know. It, I know he's trying to make funny man's funny walk though. He swings his arms and shit. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, he our, goes, nah. and our guest is calling in right now. Let me go ahead and add her. Thank you for joining us, Z. Oh, Take yeah, it well. easy. All right. Yeah. All right. Right now, we're getting ready to get our guest on here. Uh, we are joined with Chrissy Johnson. She's here with us right here on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Good evening, Chrissy. Good evening. How you doing? All right. How are you? Doing real good. Good to talk to you again. For those who may not know, uh, we interviewed you on Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C back in November. Uh, so it's uh, great to have you on this show as well. Uh, for what I've heard, Chrissy, you recently won a championship. You are the GPW Women's Champion. You defeated Autumn. I yeah, you defeated Autumn Breeze. And you defeated Ada Marie, who I'm not sure if you know or not. We interviewed Ada on this show last week. Uh, so let me let me ask you, how do, how does it feel uh, to to win that that match and become champion for the third time? It actually felt pretty good. It was a little controversial the way I won it, but it was a great win nonetheless. I actually that's not the only belt I recently won. I've actually been the Diamond, well, Diamond Dolls Tag Team Champion as well for since January. Wow. So you, you got championships all over the place right now. So you have... I got it all. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, so for this interview, for the chilling interview, I said what I meant to say, we focus mostly on your wrestling career. And for this interview, we, I want to focus a little bit about the team that you are a part of uh you are a part of um a, a stable i should say called triple f uh right so talk a little bit about how the group got together it was at a spinoff of one of the older groups coming out of south philly which was um the wrestling fundraising group awfr and they decided well all of us girls are in one way or another from pennsylvania and being from Pennsylvania but constantly working in New Jersey, we want to show how tough PA girls were. And we've all been regulars at Doc Diamond's Devastation U, working for DWF. So DC, who pretty much put the group together, just kind of picked all us girls out. He's worked with us in the past. We've belonged to Fury in one way or another. And just kind of said, you guys work well together. Go for the gold which we did, and now, kind of like the Freebird rule, we all defend the tag titles. We're all the champs. There's five of us at this point, with more coming. So does, now the triple F, does it stand for Fatal Female Fatale? Femme Fatale Fury, yes. All right. So, and how long has this group been together? It started back in January when Simply Divine and I won the tag titles. And we've been growing ever since. And uh, what what would you consider your role in this group? Are you like the leader? You're just a team player? What do you consider as your role at this group? I don't want to say I'm a leader. We all kind of lead the group together. More like team player. I'm kind of the instigator in the group. I pick all the fights and let everybody else battle them for me. I guess the best way to put it. <laughs> all right. So uh, for those who are just joining us, we have Chrissy Johnson here on uh, Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Now, obviously, you're the champion. You are a GPW Women's Champion. You are a Tag Team Champion. Anything you have 
as far as for title matches or upcoming events? I have on August 20th, I will be, well, both, all of Triple F will be in action at Doc Diamond's Devastation U for DWF in Pensacola, New Jersey. We have Free Zone 4 coming up that night, which is a free outdoor show. And then September 9th, I will be defending my CPW women's title in Scran, PA. So against so, Autumn Breeze. All right, so definitely that's going to be like in nice nah, in Pennsylvania, where you from, or is it going to be in uh, some other area in, in the East Coast? The singles title, the CPW one, will be where I'm from. That's pretty much my hometown. The tag titles is the other uh, state over. All right, so if you are in those in in the East Coast area, go check out Chrissy Johnson and uh, Triple F in action uh she's joining us here on triple threat wrestling radio uh so Chrissy, i, I want to talk to you a little bit about wwe and, and impact for a little bit especially the woman's side of things it's mm -hmm. it seems like the woman on the wwe they don't really get a lot of push like it used to back in uh church stratus and lita Obviously, I think we all can agree that Impact has the more superior woman division considering the talent that they have and considering the uh, ODB and Jackie and Tracy Brooks coming back. Uh, how do you feel about the, the, the woman division for both companies as far as talent-wise and, and, and so forth? To be honest, I don't get a chance to watch Impact. I mean, I've, I've seen the roster, and it's an amazing one. I more or less, if anything, if I have the time, I get to sit down and watch WWE programming on Mondays. That's the only night I get to see anything. And I think both companies have their rosters amazing. They have some strong talent on both. I just think, like it's always been, I think I've said it in past interviews even, women's wrestling is pushed to the side. It doesn't get what it deserves. And it's, you can see on WWE TV right now, they get, what, two minutes? They'll bring every girl on the roster out there. Two girls are in the ring, turns into a disaster, and then they're gone. The bell rings, it's over. So. And speaking of the it's WWE. Disappointing. Yeah, it is definitely disappointing. Uh, I mean, they got some talent. It's just that maybe they not giving the woman with more experience a push. It seems like all the attention is on Kelly Kelly and the Bella Twins. I mean, no, no disrespect towards them, especially Kelly Kelly, who's been the most improved. I keep hearing that from fans, all you know, wrestling fans are like, she's been the most improved. And now she's got her tough, toughest challenge. Uh, she's going to be facing Beth Phoenix. Um, how do you feel about that matchup? I agree with Kelly being improved. I wouldn't say most approved, but I think Beth is going to help bring her to one of her better matches that she's had. And it's going to be a tough one nonetheless. It's going to really, hopefully they get the time they deserve and it's going to showcase a lot of talent coming from Beth Phoenix. You know, absolutely. She's a three-time women's champion. And ever since, for the last year or two, especially recovering from her injury, she came back at Survivor Series of last year and it seems like she's taking a back seat and now that she's fully recovered and getting more airtime, you know, this is a huge opportunity for Beth not only to get her, her spotlight back but to be on top of the Divas division. I mean, it might as well be her since Karma is still in labor and she won't be back until uh, 2012. Uh, so that should be um, interesting uh, between Beth Phoenix and Kelly Kelly. Um, besides WWE and Impact, who would you consider like some of your favorite wrestling shows? To be honest, I don't get to see anything that I'm not on. I have such a busy schedule, as horrible as it sounds, but I haven't seen any of the indie work lately. Except for maybe a show here or there. All right. Um, so, Chrissy, 
obviously you've been on chilling before so I'm guessing you know what's coming next um, the voice drop like you did on chilling but you know say your name and then you say you are listening to uh, triple threat wrestling radio uh, if you can whenever you're ready okay. whenever you're ready for me alright go for it okay Hi, this is Chrissy Johnson. You're listening to Triple Threat Re- Re- Wrestling Radio. That's okay. Let's try that one more time. Okay. It's like a tongue teaser. All right. Ready? Ready. Okay. Hi, this is Chrissy, Chrissy Johnson. You're listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Got it on a second time. Oh, and uh, All be- right. b- before you go, why don't you tell the people your your, your links, your Facebook and uh, and everything. Just go on Facebook, search Chrissy Johnson, and it'll come up a fan page, and then there is actually one you can send a friend request to. Also the same on Twitter, and on Facebook you can find Triple F there as well. Just search Triple F, Femme Fatale Fury, and our fan page does come up. All right, so uh, go to Facebook, check her out on, on there, and check out the group Triple F for upcoming events. Uh, Chrissy, good hearing from you again, and uh, congrats on your championships. And uh, Thank you. best of success goes out to you. Thank you for calling in, and uh, you have a good night. Have a good week. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. That was Chrissy Johnson of Triple F just joined us. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, now we're about to get to the um, to the impact side of the show and we're going to be making our picks for the hardcore justice pay-per-view they used to call it hard justice but they changed it to hardcore uh and i'm here i'm looking at the chat room from snookum dip saying that triple h may be facing cm punk at survivor series well if that's the case that just may be a warm-up match for triple h so that he can get ready for his eventually rematch against uh, Undertaker. So uh, there you go. And before we get to the impact side, here is your um, segment here. This day in wrestling history. On August the 4th, in 1996, WCW Collision in Korea aired on pay-per-view the event was taped over two days on the 28th and the 29th of April in April 1995 in North Korea it was a joint promotion between WCW and NJPW and was the first major appearance of an American promotion in the county it also set the as yet unbeaten record for the longest longest attendance at a wrestling event with over 340,000 people attending over two days. The WCW wrestlers that participated in this was Two Cold Scorpio, uh, let's see, World Warrior Hawk, the Steiner Brothers, Antonio Inoki, and Nature Boy Ric Flair. As for title changes on this day, back in night, back in uh, 1989, Scott Braddock and Cactus Jack defeated Jeff Jarrett and Matt Bourne to win the WCCW World Tag Team Titles. That's no relation to Evan Bourne. In 2002, Bradshaw defeated Tommy Dreamer to win the. The hardcore title, but lose it back to Dreamer before the end of the night. Kind of like what happened with Mysterio winning the title and Cena wins it by the end of the night. Uh, and speaking of Cena, back in 2008 on Monday Night Raw, Batista and John Cena defeated Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase to win the tag team titles. And as for your birthdays, happy birthday to five-time X Division champion Kazarian, 
and uh, Dean Malenko, who wrestled in ECW, WCW, and WWF. He is 51 years old. And other news, according to Andrew Burning Master, Amazing Red has parted ways with TNA. So that, that is your history lesson. This day in wrestling history on August the 4th. Let's go ahead and get to the impact portion of the show. We are a few days away from the pay-per-view Hardcore Justice. And let's take a look at what's in store for impact tonight. Uh, Samoa Joe will take on the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. AJ Styles takes on Devon. And the team of Scott Steiner and Gunner takes on RVD and Crimson. Uh, so uh, those are a couple of matches. And we're going to find out from Velvet Sky. We're going to find out from Velvet Sky what happened. And wait a minute. Just lost Jeff. For some reason the Skype has just cut off the phone call. I don't know what just happened here. Let me go ahead and try to get Jeff back in a call here. Skype just cut off the uh, phone call. So let me try to get Jeff back on here. Uh, sorry people. Just a slight internet hiccup. I'm going to try to get Jeff back online here. And I just... And Jeff's no longer in the chat room. I just tried to call... I'm calling Jeff right now. Um... I don't know what happened. Hey, this is Jeff. I'm sorry I wasn't here to take your call, but at the beep. And he's... He's not even in here. Okay, he's still online on Skype, but he won't... For some reason, he must be away from the computer again. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else to say, people. Uh, I heard Jeff. I heard his background just fine. And then Skype just cut the phone call. So I'm going to try to call Jeff again. I mean, he is right. Microsoft's been screwing up Skype lately. He... Uh, Microsoft has been screwing up so I'm gonna try to get Jeff to call in hey this is Jeff uh, and now I am getting a oh okay just had a Skype message from Jeff he has an emergency so he won't be able to join us for the remainder of the show <laughs> you funny Andrew you funny but as I was saying an um, impact is tonight you got the bound for glory series going on right now uh, there's gonna be three matches um, for some reason I'm not keeping up with the bound for glory scoreboard but I believe Clemson RVD is on top of the scoreboard and whoever wins this Bound for Glory series will be the number one contender for the Impact World Heavyweight Championship belt. Uh, so right now, and how about Crimson being undefeated and yet not a whole lot of people are talking about it. I think they're trying to make him to look like a Goldberg or something. And Samoa Joe with the undefeated streak. He's facing some people. It's just that I don't know. He still like the Pope. He likes the Pope. D'Angelo Bailey. Um, we're now getting to the last 10 minutes of the show. So I talked a little bit about impact a little bit. And uh, also what's gonna happen between Velvet Sky, Tracy Brooks. Jackie and ODB. Velvet Sky is giving 
uh, Jackie and ODB an ultimatum. Either we can work things out or all this feud is going to keep going. Now obviously Jackie and ODB are pissed off at Velvet Sky because they feel that Velvet Sky took their spot. They feel that Impact focused more on her. Now you got ODB who's a former knockout champion. You got Jackie who's a former women's champion in the WWE. I mean, these ain't pushovers. These are well-respected wrestlers. So, and Tracy Brooks has come to the defense of, has come to the defense of Velvet Sky, you know, letting her know she got her back. And you know, Velvet Sky has been eyeing for that knockout championship, but she's been unable to but she's been unable to due to Jackie and ODB. And she knows if ODB, not ODB, but if Vervis guy wants to get that opportunity, she's got to take care of Jackie and ODB first. Those two ladies are going to make sure her life and her wrestling career is not good. They're going to make her miserable going forward. Um, and Andrew giving me more news here in the chat room here. Uh, if you pre-order WWE 12, the new video game, you can get the Rock and the Miz outfits. Um, I've already heard that if you pre-order WWE 12, you can get what what you call it. You can get the Rock. As a lockable, as an unlockable character. That's only if you pre-order it right now. The game won't come out until I guess October or November. So that's the uh, they no longer calling it SmackDown versus Raw. They're going to be calling it WWE 12, 13, depending on the year. It'll be WWE 12 as in 2012. <laughs> you know you're doing it, huh? Um, so tomorrow night on SmackDown, uh, Christian and Orton, that feud continues. Sheamus taking on Mark Henry one on one. And since Andrew, you're the only person that's in this chat room that actually attended the SmackDown taping, don't give any spoilers, okay? No spoilers in this chat room, all right? <laughs> All right, and he's telling me that the WWE 12 video game coming out in November. So let's go ahead and make our picks for the Impact Hardcore Justice pay-per-view. And since Jeff ain't here due to an emergency, I'm going to have to make these picks on my own. And people in the chat room, feel free to make your picks as well. Let's go ahead and get to our first match. Hardcore Justice pay-per-view. It will be the Pope taking on Devon. The Pope D'Angelo D'Angelo De Niro. I call him D'Angelo Bailey for some reason. My apologies. Is D'Angelo De Niro taking on Devon? Uh for a Bound for Glory serious match. I'm going to go with the Pope to win that match. Then you got RVD versus Crimson. RVD, a former champion, taking on the undefeated Crimson. Crimson has never lost since debuting on Impact. But if you're going to get beat, you might as well get beat by the best. I'm going with RVD to win that match. And then you got the Knockouts Championship match. Between Winter versus Mickey James. Angel Angelina Love will be at ringside. Thank the good Lord, she's no longer a zombie. She actually talks now. And you gotta think that if Mickey defeats Winter, she's gonna wanna be next in line for that title. And I would love to see Angelina Love take on Mickey James 
for that championship. So with that said, I'm going to go with Mickey James to retain the knockout championship. Then you got the six man tag team match between Fortune and Immortal. For many months, these two stables have been going at it. You got Kazarian, Beer Money, Styles. So since, let's see, I'm looking at the Battle for Glory match. So I'm going to assume it's going to be Styles, Daniels, and Kazarian taking on Steiner, Abyss, and Gunner. And this uh, representing Immortal. It's going to be a six man tag team match. I'm going to go with Immortal to win that match. They're cheaters. They'll find their way to win. <laughs> you know what, Andrew? I'll take that as consideration, man. On the comment you just made. Now we're about to get to our last three matches here. The X Division Championship. Austin Aries versus Alex Shelley versus Brian Kendrick. Now remember, Austin Aries won that contract match at Destination X to officially be part of the Impact roster. And now all of a sudden, he's in the running for the championship X Division title. No more Abyss, he's out of the equation, he's out of the way. So now, we get to see the X Division the high flying, the, all the excitement. I'm curious to see what Austin Aries does. You know, now that he's got the contract, he's already in a championship match. You're going up against Kendrick, you're going against Shelly. And Shelly has been a solo star since his tag team partner Chris Saban's been hurt. As for this match, I'm going to go with Brian Kendrick to successfully retain his belt as for the tag team championship Mexican America versus beer money this should be a smash mouth matchup for the tag team gold it's pretty obvious that Hernandez and his tag team partner they have been eyeing for those tag team titles and now you're going up against beer money who I consider the best tag team in Impact. But I seen the wind of change is coming in the tag team division. I don't I do not like Mex Mexican America's antics, but I'm gonna pick them to become the new tag team champions. That's my pick, Mexican America to beat beer or beer money. And as for our main event for the Impact World Heavyweight title, it will be between it will be between Kurt Angle versus Sting. Kurt Angle versus Sting. Kurt Angle will go down as one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. But since coming to Impact, he has never defeated Sting one on one and you know he wants to add that to his hall of fame resume he wants to beat sting and he wants to beat the new champion after all he's been through with jeff jarrett for many months sting's gonna bring in all he have but i'm gonna go with kurt angle to become a world champion once again those are my picks for the Impact Hardcore Justice pay-per-view. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you to Chrissy Johnson for joining us. And uh, good luck to Andrew for his upcoming event with swimming. He's doing some sports out there in Kentucky. Good luck to you, Andrew. And I hope you have fun at the SmackDown taping this past Tuesday, which will be on tomorrow night on Sci-Fi. And right after SmackDown, right after SmackDown, former WWE superstar-ish guest stars 
and a, a TV show called Haven. So if you like Ash, you like the movie Haven, go check it out. It's on at 10 o'clock right after SmackDown. But Impact Wrestling is coming up next on Spike TV. And I'm about to go and watch that right now. Oh, wait a minute. He doesn't do swimming. I could have sworn you typed swimming. <laughs> well, good luck to your upcoming events. Let's just say that. Good luck to Andrew and his upcoming events. My fault, man. I'm about to get on out of here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Next week, Indy Pro Wrestler Barbie Hayden, and we make our picks from SummerSlam, and we will recap Hardcore Justice. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Don't forget, Triple Threat Wrestling Radio, ChillinBroadcasting.com. Uh, ChillinBroadcasting.com. Go to the TTW Radio page. More info on the show. And uh, go check out Chilling with Jeffrey Kennedy C. Saturdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 noon Pacific. Closing into that 200 show on uh, what day is it? August 27th. Maybe someday, Andrew. Maybe someday. But right now, I'm about to get on off the air, man, because Impact's on right now. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll, I'll see you this Saturday on Chilling with Jeffrey Kenny C. And I'll see you next Thursday night on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. You all have a good week. You all have a good weekend. It's your boy Kenny C. I'm out of here.